they're physical, they rebound the heck out of the ball, especially at the offensive end. The one glimmer of hope if you're a Leopard fan. Army comes in seven and one at home, but they struggle on the road. So let's see if the road woes don't uh, persist here for the uh, Black Knights. They are three and six away from their home court. And uh, if they needed any good news, doubt if they really knew it coming in. Good double team by Lafayette, forced the turnover. At the half, it was uh, Boston University beating uh, Navy. And Navy currently is one of those four teams tied at the top at four and one, along with Loyola, Lehigh, and of course, Army. Lafayette desperately looking for a Patriot League win. Fulton down inside. They love to go to Neil Quinn. Nice back cut, not quite well, they're gonna get a foul here. And it took a while for the whistle to blow, but certainly CJ was expecting it. Yeah, again, you saw the pass off the high post and you, it's something you'll see all afternoon long. Neil Quinn, probably the best passing center in the Patriot League, but Lafayette needs to start playing with confidence. And Gary, is this kind of a chicken and egg kind of thing? You know, do you, do you gain confidence by playing well or, you know, do you, do you uh, uh, does your confidence in, in, encourage you to play well? And, and Lafayette, just whatever it takes, they have to be more assertive, and uh, something good's got to happen. They've been in a real funk. Took a while for that chicken to come out of the egg. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't quite, uh, yeah, it's uh, not hatched. That idea was half, half hatched. How about a 14-footer knocked down by Josh Caldwell? We're tied at two. Caldwell, their second leading scorer, but Gary, he, uh, that, along with Jalen Rucker, form a really good backcourt for the Black Knights. Caldwell is 13th in the league in scoring in the conference. He is averaging 13.1 points a game. There is that toughness, but they just, they are relentless. Look at the relentless play of Josh Caldwell. It will be Lafayette ball on the possession arrow. That was basically Josh Caldwell all by himself that was not a man-to-man. -man. It was one guy on one guy. Let's take a look at the Army starters. Yeah, right? well, I, you know, you could you could throw a dart at, at the board and pick out the impact player, but I had Josh Caldwell as we take a look. Again, that defense you talked about in the open. Josh Caldwell, Jalen Rucker, terrific backcourt. Aaron Duhart, probably their best percentage-wise accuracy three-point shooter. But Gary, Mann and Peterson absolutely attack the offensive glass. That's going to be a key today. Double figure scorers, Jalen Rucker at 15.3. He's number eight in the conference at 16.6. And of course, Josh Caldwell, Caldwell, there you get a look at Lafayette starters. That hasn't changed, John. Yeah, they're getting the most consistent play out of the backcourt with Perry and Fulton. But you know, you gotta look for the guys up front to start establishing themselves more. It's gonna be a challenge today, the way Army goes, uh, attacks the glass. That's Duhart, he's one of the co-captains on the basketball team outside put up by Caldwell that doesn't go wow going to the yeah. basket hard with <laughs> Chris Mann well that's me that's what he does he's their third best offensive rebounder out of the corner that one does not fall in fact the rebound just came right down to the floor Leo Boyle has uh, struggled at times knocking tri triples down at 35 percent as Rucker he is so quick Peterson all 6'9". Yeah, 6'9", yeah. Yeah, ran into seven foot. There goes Look Mann. How, wow, he's Mann quick. with a nice quick move. Chris Mann out of Phillipsburg. He's got a nice contingent here today uh, to watch him. Played at Phillipsburg High School just across the river from Lafayette. Saw his high school coach or uh, athletic director, Tom Fisher here. Tom, long time coach over at Phillipsburg. Chris averaging 7.8 in the conference. He's number 10 in the conference in steals. Gary, how quick was that move from 15 feet for a guy six foot six? You love a quick fake that doesn't really have a lot to it. Just a little quick pump flake, a little kind of flick in your body, and that one, that's what Lafayette needs to do is make those shots. Tyrone at 38%. He cannot get that one to fall. He's number one in threes per game in the conference. He's got 34 of them. The Army goes with three guards, and they are so quick. Caldwell, Duhart, Jalen Rucker. Good hustle. CJ, he managed to see that pick and roll, and he got in front of the pass. Freshman plays with a lot more savvy than his freshman year might suggest. 
Army coach by Jimmy Allen. Jimmy in his sixth season, 76-87. Brando Hanlon, of course, 27 years at the helm for Lafayette. Last year, they made it to the tournament semifinals. Not a great possession by the Leopards. And Gary, you and I have followed Lafayette basketball long enough to know when they're in sync on offense and when they're not. And so, thus far, it's rare that Lafayette on offense has the game dictated to them. Their offense usually dictates how it's played. That's not been the case this year. I know it's not a word, but if there's a team that can unsync you, <laughs> Army is the team. Yeah, you know what? It took me 27 years, but my influence is starting to wear <laughs> off on you. <laughs> yeah, invent words, Gary. Yeah, That's using good. words yeah, that don't do exist. That. Is that a word? Well, it is now. Matt Dove in the lineup for Army out of Princeton, Indiana, not Princeton, New Jersey, number 44. Pull up. That's the guy they can't stop right now. Josh Caldwell puts it up and in. The lead is four. Well, you got to step out. He can't come off that cleanly on that high screen. He's just too accurate. And that's a mid-range jump shot that's pretty much automatic for Caldwell. Tomas Verbinskis is in. Outside. That one won't go. Lafayette not making their threes. They're now 0 for 3. Pull up jump shot. Rucker doesn't get to go. Not a great outside shooting team is Army, but they get their opportunities and uh, so they, many possessions. They make them at 33%, not too bad. Lafayette cannot get that. Leo's had three pretty much wide open shots. How about the quickness of Rucker right there? Another offensive rebound, that's what they do. Man takes it to the hole and he's going to, they're gonna call a blocking foul. Wow. Because a little bit uh, in their last ball game, he uh, forgot his jersey. And uh, that kept him from starting in that ball game. And, but then he came out, did a nice job. Chris Mann misses his first foul shot, 63% on the season. Another little uh, chink in the armor. The, that, that is not the offensive rebounding. But Army does not shoot particularly well from the free throw line. It's a 61%. That's particularly bad. Of course, Lafayette hasn't been doing really well either. Lafayette, John, in the conference, they're number nine in free throw shooting. When was the last time Never. that ever happened? They're at 58%. Way outside, no. And a rebound by mm. Mac Dove. Dove's big, Dove's at 6'10", just a sophomore. That's a great entry pass. Nowhere to go, good, good help defense by Tyrone Perry. But a wide open three doesn't go, and Lafayette finally ends that possession without Army scoring a bucket. Finally, finally, well, well chosen word right there, and it's like that. When you, uh, when Army shoots the ball, the first first order of business is to block somebody out. Javon in the ball game for Lafayette, one of the co-captains. Jay a walk on, and he has just worked his way to the point where he gets some playing time. Nothing going for the Leopards beyond the arc. A great look, it's one you'll usually see them make. Turnover. Here they go. Tyrone ahead of everybody. Chris Mann there to stay with him, but Tyrone just takes it to the hole, 6-4. It's a great finish. And Gary, it was a lot more difficult than it looked like because Chris Mann is a heck of an athlete, and he was up there, right up there. 6-6 six, six against 6-2. Yeah. Oh, nice tough <laughs> shot up and in by Mann. Is Mann it, with four. Is it me or do lefties have an advantage in this game sometimes? I mean, that was... Probably you, but... Yeah, probably me. <laughs> <laughs> When I coached with Butch, he wanted, his goal was to get five lefties on the court at one time. He would recruit a kid if he's left-handed, whether he could play or not. So far, we cannot find uh, the hole at all. From beyond the arc, we are now 0 for 6. In the paint, three seconds. Yeah, no, we're going to hit a foul here. Waiting for that call as well, but apparently Duhart got rid of it in time. The line change here for the Black Knights. Four in, four out. Who stayed in, I guess? Rucker. John Brantley in the ball game for Lafayette. That foul was called on Kyle Jenkins. So we got Perry in there along with Brantley, Verbinskis, Jay Vaughn, and Neil Quinn. And Lafayette, two Leopards there to get the rebound. Neither one of them picked it up. Wow. An opportunity to get a stop and not allow Army to get an offensive rebound. And even when 
Army's not around the ball. They seem to get an extra possession. If you want some good news, Army only has eight points. Yeah. They've had plenty of opportunities to put up more than that. Here we go again. There you get a look at uh, three-point shooting in this ball game. Not very good. Army's 0 for 5 now. And Lafayette is 0 for 7. Army loves to dribble drive and kick it out. Looking to go. That's Peterson. Peterson against the big guy. Peterson up and no. You got him. And again, they get the offensive rebound. Just relentless. And no. They're not shooting any better than we are. See, they had a little Bronx cheer when Lafayette came down with a defensive rebound. Brantley. Stolen away. On the move. Here comes Rucker. Rucker against Vaughn. And Vaughn with some. They're going to call a foul, but a foul that Jay had to take. Jalen Rucker, only a sophomore. You know, Gary, was kind of uh, invisible last year. And there you see Jay Vaughn trying to get the strip. But Jalen Rucker is arguably the quickest guard in the league, coast to coast. I know it's cold outside, but I never Oof. expected it to be this cold inside. Wow. Lafayette shooting 12.5%. Rucker. Rucker drops the foul shot. He's a 77% free throw shooter. Would it be apropos to say that Jalen Rucker breaks the ice. It would, yes. How about that? I'd see how I, what I did there, I played right <laughs> off your, I played right off your ice cold. Mm. You always follow that up with a nice pat on your own back, <laughs> which I think is. I'm not used to, also I'm just not used to people getting my jokes. <laughs> my, my innuendos are. 10 4. It's been a while since the Leopards have put any points on the board. Watch out. Boy, it's an adventure, isn't it? These guys get all over you defensively. Inside, and we're going to get a foul. That will finally get the Leopards to the line. Leo O'Boyle will go to the foul line. Foul will be called on Caldwell. This first, team's third. But even that drive to the basket, you know, against the lesser defensive team, Leo probably has a clear lane to the rim. But they are just relentless, and they're constantly, nothing is free against Army, nothing. O'Boyle 85% from the free throw line. We just don't get there very much. One of the bugaboos for Lafayette is they don't spend very much time at all from the foul line. They're at 72% now. No one in the top 14 in the conference on the Lafayette team is in the top 14 percentage-wise from the free throw line. Well, you know, Gary, there's really two things at play there. Number one, you know, the system, Lafayette is historically a three-point shooting team. It's a... It's a, it's a passing game, it's, it's a motion offense, and they've historically been a great three-point shooting team. The other thing, Gary, is they haven't been ahead a lot in games. And at the end of games, teams don't have to foul them. They go to a 2-3 zone on this possession. That shot put up and dropped. Bucket is good by T.J. Small, who came into the ball game. He was in the prep school last year, 3.5 points per game. Nearly a turnover there as uh, Army Small right after hitting the three. Did a little one-man press. He almost forced Lafayette into a turnover. That, by the way, was the first three made in the game. So after going 0 for 13, somebody was able to drop one. And Army has their biggest lead at seven. Army's got nine, nine or ten players that average double-figure minutes. So Jimmy Allen's going to go deep to his bench, and he'll go there often. Starting lineup on the floor right now for Army. And the same is true for Lafayette. Can we get one? Yeah, we can. Let's see if we get Leo, Leo warmed up. He drops that one. Leo with five points. And they can come in bunches if you're Lafayette. Well, that's a great look by Caldwell. Man from the corner, no. Caldwell got to the rim and you saw him fine man, but. Kyle Jenkins, wide open. C.J. Fulton puts it up, won't go. Man with a rebound. Out of the pack, no advantage. Boy, is man a typical Army play? Ooh, ooh, ooh yeah. Ooh, 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 yeah, that's <laughs> ball game. And Tyrone is trying to keep everybody up and convince them that, hey, it's not how you play early in this conference, it's how you play late. And he said, we just have to keep getting better and better and find ways to make that big shot when it's called for. CJ with a pump fake, no. 
Outside again, Leo, and again, Leo back to back. It's a good sign early on, Leo can string him out. And uh, two in a row is a great sign for the Leopard offense. Back to within one, 13-12. Back outside, good defense, nowhere to go. That's Caldwell, Caldwell drops the ball off. Peterson nowhere to go. Nice defense inside by Quinn that time. Yeah, nice pass to Mann. Mann found himself open. Everybody else was covered up. And Mann lays it up and in on a good pass that came from Caldwell. Yeah, Caldwell is so cool and calm in traffic. And that was a great delivery. Easy finish for Mann. Fulton gets a screen from Jenkins. Kyle's open. That's way outside. Tyrone knocks down the triple. He's got five. That's his 34th triple of the year. And we are tied for the second time at 15 all. It can become contagious. Way outside, man again. Good rebound. Neil Quinn. Hey, Quinn's doing a better job here in the last couple of minutes, both defensively. Oh, nice job by man to get in front of Kyle Jenkins. Man's given away about two or three inches on Jenkins. Had to front him that time. Look at a line change for Army. They'll bring in four players, keep Josh Caldwell out on the floor. And Lafayette brings Jay Vaughn back in. That's the other thing, you know, Gary, the, the, the other issue that Fran's been dealing with is depth issue. You know, uh, his depth is young. Boy, is Leo feeling it? That was a great catch and shoot. He never brought the ball down. He never stopped his momentum. Went straight up with it. And Lafayette has the lead for the second time. They led 2-0, they lead by two here. Number 10 out there is Isaiah Caldwell. He's a freshman for Army. Six foot, six four actually from Columbia, South Carolina. Well, that, that's pretty easy. Yeah. Up and in by Matt Dove. All created by Jalen Rucker, who got the step, forced the switch, and found the open man easily. Oh Kyle my. Jenkins no, off the mark. Dave Vaughn uh, in there amongst the trees, could not come up with that rebound. Caldwell with the ball. Caldwell baseline, stopped by O'Boyle, and an offensive foul on Caldwell. That's his second foul. Boy, I tell you what, arguably the best stretch of basketball we've seen from Leo O'Boyle in recent times. Not only is he getting it done at the offensive end, look at this, that's just a great job to cut off the baseline. Caldwell has nowhere to go, and he just extends that elbow on the offensive foul. So that brings T.J. Small into the ball game. Caldwell will probably sit maybe for the rest of this first half with a couple of fouls. I assume that's Jimmy Allen's philosophy. We'll see. Jimmy Allen, of course, six years an assistant at Army, son of an academy graduate. Oh boy, they've got Jenkins inside matched up with Rucker. That doesn't work, does it? No, it Rucker. does it does not. Kyle with his first point. This is more like the offense we've been used to seeing Lafayette run. Tough shot, but it's good. Jalen Rucker had to go over uh, the outstretched hand of Neil Quinn. We talked about impact players, and I literally, in my head, flipped a coin. I mean, Rucker and Caldwell, they have been a dynamic duo for uh, Army early season. Quinn yet to score in the game. Wide open, Tyrone Perry. He won't have a more wide open shot, and he couldn't get it to fall. Sometimes that's the toughest shot for a shooter. Uh-oh, whose body, whose body? Is it Army has never been to the Patriot League Championship Final? Oh my goodness, that's is hard that to believe. Right? Yeah. Remember when they Last year they made the semi for the first time since 2016, and obviously this is their best conference start in eight seasons, but they've never played in the Patriot League final, and they're the only team to say that about. There's a triple by Jalen Rucker. That's interesting. I would not have known that. So that trivia question is not three. That's three in a row against Army in the 70s. No, playing, I'm talking about Army's team. Army has oh, okay. not had a three winning seasons in a row. They had one last year, 12 and 10. Lafayette and Army did not play last year. Four to shoot, it's got to go Somebody's got to shoot it. Good if it goes? Nope, they say no. 
Army has won seven of the last 10 between these two teams, but Lafayette leads the series 46 to 33. Lafayette with four of their five starters on the floor, the exception, Tomas Verbinskis. Josh Caldwell back in the game, surprisingly, but there's two fouls. But again, I think that speaks more than, as much as anything, to the depth that Jimmy Allen plays with. Caldwell's obviously important. Boy, he's man so again with that little fake, and he forces Verbinskis to foul him. Now, they're both lefties, so Verbinskis should know through their eyes, everybody in the world's lefty. So don't let them beat you left. So through osmosis, <laughs> a lefty knows how to play a lefty? You would think, you think, yeah. You do everything left-handed, you get on his left hand. I really like the way Chris Mann plays. He is such a prototypical Army player. Had no intention of going to the academy. Yeah, great story. Yeah, Christmas Eve, gets a call from Army. He kind of weighed all the pros and cons. There are a lot more pros to become a cadet than there were negatives. He talked about how, you know, his parents dropped him off. They said goodbye, and within about two hours, he was doing push-ups. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. Watch out. Can't use it. Yeah, Frank got for Navy. There's submarine warfare and yeah, yeah, right. all kinds of logistical stuff. For John and I, let's get to the buffet <laughs> first. <laughs> Strategic <laughs> tactics. All right, the Leverett's been stuck on 19. Down by five, trailed by as many as seven. Got the tie and got the lead. They have relinquished that. Three on the shot clock. Whoa, that's gonna count. <laughs> Neil Quinn's first bucket of the game. And Army's D, Gary, has forced two shot clock violations and then that one right there. So bad miss by Army. Here Charlie, come the Leopards. Charlie Peterson. <laughs> Yeah, that's that was an ugly shot. He's not going to want to watch that one again. Ooh, Kyle Jenkins was wide open. Nobody saw him. Great help by Peterson. That one doesn't go for Neal. He was practicing his threes before the ball game. Pretty good outside shooter, actually. Rutgers feeling it. That one does not go off the mark. Duhart cannot run it down. So Aaron Duhart misses. A triple, he's a good three-point shooter, 44%. He has 14 of them. He's a key sub last year. He was injured in his sophomore season. He had 20 against Lehigh. Isaiah Caldwell checks in the game, and Isaiah is a good player for uh, Army. He's only a freshman. Gary, watch Army play defense and count how many times they go under a screen. Never, the answer is never. Anytime there's a Lafayette screen, at all costs, the defender is going to follow around the screen. And to be able to do that and yet not allow back cuts and things of that nature, Jenkins can, he can't get that rebound. Instead, it's Mann that ended up with it. Mann had great position and long arms. Mann now with four rebounds. Peterson. Walk. Yeah, yeah he walked. I think the crowd called that one. I think so, too. The whistle came late, but the crowd call was much earlier. The thing about Peterson, you look at his shooting percentage, and he wants nothing to do with the basketball necessarily unless he's going to pass it when he's more than 10 feet from the hole. So he's getting his shooting, his shots at point blank range. In the game for Army for the first time is Nolan Ness. He is a freshman, a long one, 6'8", Laguna Beach, California. He wears number 41. We talked about Army's depth, where they have an advantage there. So Jimmy Allen is just trying to make this a full court game. See Gary over the top, always over the top on the screens. 17 feet away, that doesn't go for Leo. So now Lafayette's going cold again, much like they were early in this ball game. Good job defensively. Kept the hands up, out of bounds, Lafayette ball. Kept their hands up, didn't come down, didn't commit the foul. It's about as well as you can defend Josh Caldwell without fouling him because he made a very assertive run to the rim and again Fran O'Hanlon trying to do his best to keep up with the pace of this game personnel wise the reason Army's pressing right now not necessarily to create turnovers although they can do that nice job by Jada split that double team he was in serious trouble where he caught that ball you have to real appreciate as outside shot knocked down that's a two 
for Tyrone Perry. 24-23, getting back to Jay Vaughn. He was a walk-on, one of those guys that Fran kind of goes to get because he's going to be a great practice player. All of a sudden, he's playing, John. Yeah, he just hard work. Four years, he comes every day, loves the game, knows the game, and uh, the kind of, wow, look at that block. Good players down there, experience and youth. Yeah, they're four and one also. Caldwell in the middle, runs into a lot of trees. Outside shot, no. And nice rebound by Rabio. He went and got it. First time he's in the ball game. Chris Rabio, the 6'10 freshman. Well, he had a chance to take the lead here now with a good possession. Eric Sonberg, he wears number five. He's in there for the first time. Vaughn stays in there. Not a lot of firepower out there right now for Lafayette. Sonberg, can he be one of them? No. And the rebound is controlled by Ness. 6'8, Ness kind of bringing it up the court. Wisely now, gives it off to the point guard. Boy, he's pretty quick. Do a lot of dribbling in the paint, but you're going to have trouble shooting the ball over people. But not if you tip it in when you are six foot eight. That was Ness. And long arms and only a freshman. And again, that's their, uh, that's their seventh offensive rebound, Gary. And they are out rebounding the Leopards right now, 21 to 10. Which indicates amazing laugh. Lafayette's as close as they are right now with those numbers. Army can get up by more than the three. With the ball, Rucker. Rucker will get rid of Matt Dove, send them down low. Dove against Jay Vaughn cannot happen. Great ball movement right there. Rabio came flying out. Jay Vaughn shook that one loose. So Jay Vaughn in there amongst the uh, taller Army players. Shook it loose so Lafayette could get the rebound. That was key because Army was uh, positioned to get another offensive rebound and a putback. Javon kept it loose and Lafayette came away with it. Kyle Jenkins gets rid of it. Sonberg, Javon. Five to shoot now. That's, that was tipped. Sonberg rebound. Ooh. Sonberg looking for a foul, didn't get it. Well, that's the fourth time now Lafayette has played against the shot clock. You don't see that very often. The Perry shot got tipped. We're going to get a foul on Tyrone. Yeah, it's probably one of those that the referee almost didn't want to call, but as Rucker was falling out of bounds, I guess the referee was forced to. Just the fifth team foul, no shot. Lafayette gets some firepower in there now. Quinn back in. Leo O'Boyle back in there. C.J. Fulton, Lafayette with their starting lineup. Lafayette's played a good game defensively. They really have. Had some problems on the boards for sure, but against the offense, they've been pretty good. There goes Mann again. Oh, look at the block by Neil Quinn. He just smothered that ball without committing a foul. Almost anticipated that Mann was going to spin back to his left. Got an advantage here. Kyle, no. Man, he is just not, they, Kyle's a better shooter than that. He just has not been on of late. He's in a funk. Kyle in this ball game, 0 for 3 from beyond the arc, 1 for 4 on the floor. Man, good job, Quinn. He beat the Army player to the ball. There goes Kyle, what do we have? going to be a blocking foul against Army. I like the call. I was holding my breath. But obviously, I mean, Kyle's under control here. And you saw Duhart moving just ever so slightly. Duhart second. Jenkins, Fulton. Ooh, that's a nice crossover dribble. Quicko is Rucker to stay with him. Look at Army work on defense. No one has kept the ball out of Neil Quinn's hands better than Army has. And that won't go. Neil just has not been able to be a factor, John, in the paint. No, he's not. He's done a great job at the defensive end, but they're really, they've really quieted him at the offensive end. Army can hold for the last shot. There's a one second difference.
Peterson. Rucker. They got the switch. No way. I was, I was gonna, gonna say. say. <laughs> Can they get it off? Good if it goes. And we'll put the ball in play. Army will start Caldwell, Rucker, Mann, Duhart, and Peterson. The Leopards, Perry, Jenkins, Fulton, O'Boyle, and Quinn. Glad you're with us. 26-23 in favor of the Black Knights. Or is it tied? It is not. Good look. Hey, Lafayette got an offensive rebound. Hey, the Leopards got a dunk. How about that? Jenkins on the rebound from Leo O'Boyle. Their second offensive rebound of the game of the day. <laughs> Imagine that. And they uh, make Army pay. Put that one in the highlight reel. Oh, another good job by Theo Quinn. There was certainly body contact, but no call. They let him play on and uh, deal with a good block. Jimmy Allen having a word, but you know, Gary, when you're playing this way, both teams, again, not backing down, playing great defense, and uh, it's okay. Officials have done a good job, I think, so far in this game. They, they've let kind of the game, the type of game, become the type of game, so. Not an easy game to officiate. Six to shoot now, man's gotta realize it. He does, I think. Oh, that's offensive. Yes, oh, yeah. that's another foul on this one. Well, let's hope that uh, Leo's okay. He kinda got planted this time. Yeah, Tyrone Perry uh, just had, a, he just gotta get untangled from the basket stand. Watch this, lowers the shoulder. Boy, and Leo goes rolling. Fortunately, he missed that basket uh, standard, and I think he, and it fell on his lower back more than anything else. So uh, he took a shot, and uh, our camera operator was able to avoid any collision. John Sabino, our director and producer, he's he's just happy uh, budget-wise because the camera is <laughs> the camera is safe. I think the Leo Boyle scholarship is worth much more <laughs> than, than the yeah, camera. Well, okay. No. No. No disrespect, John Sabino, and he just informs us that people are replaceable, but equipment is not. Well, it depends. Uh oh, I'll there's stop that, making fun of John. There's that issue, that issue, <laughs> that budget issue again. I'll worry right. about our jobs now. Javier <laughs> <laughs> had turned the ball over. That was their fifth turnover of the game. That's not too shabby. Down by a point. Into the middle goes Rucker, dribbled by everybody. Quinn has been so problematic for Army in this game. Tyrone for the lead. Boom, he knocks down a triple. And Army's going to call timeout, as we will call timeout, too. Hey, the Leopards back up on top by two. Don't go anywhere with us. We are back. We welcome you back. Tyrone Perry, 10 points on the board, 4 for 8 from the floor, 2 for 6 from beyond the arc. The thing that Fran O'Hanlon has to be especially pleased with, Gary, is to this point at least, Lafayette is leading in a game that is being played the way you think Army wants to play. Let's go to a 1-3-1 one, one here. We haven't seen much of that this year. And Boy. the corner is open against the 1-3-1, one, one, so Rucker Knocks down his second triple. That's the one vulnerable spot. That, and if the ball goes to the post. So you deny the post, you got to get to the corner. And Rucker made Lafayette pay. So Army back up on top. Lead change number five. Just Still can't. unable to knock down that shot is Kyle Jenkins. Yeah, they went under the screen on him. Rucker again. Stopped away by Tyrone. That timeout was an angry timeout by Jimmy Allen. He got in the face of his players, and he stayed in their face until they came back out on the floor. Oh, yeah. A rare miscue by Josh Caldwell that time turning the ball over. Let's see what Neil can do. He hasn't had many opportunities. Kyle inside. Kyle up. Kyle, yes. Jenkins. Sometimes a lot easier than a triple. Yeah, and you know, Gary, sometimes that's what it takes to get a shooter going. Get yourself to the foul line or get a couple layups. Just get the sense of that ball going through the rim. Duhart. Army loves the penetrate and kick, but their penetration has been stopped in the paint, particularly by Neil Quinn in this game. Wide open. Duhart, no, doesn't get it, but there's long shot, long rebound. And long shot, no rebound. My goodness. Rucker. 
And we said this during the women's game yesterday, Gary, that a team is really vulnerable against the three, especially after an offensive rebound. You just don't get matched up in time. For Rucker, he now has 48 triples on the year. He leads the team in that by far with that number. Oh, how about that spin oh. move? Was that a guard? Oh my goodness, how about the spin from the elbow? Neil Quinn, all seven feet, about 245, as nimble as you want him to be. Four ties. Now we're gonna foul on Tyrone Perry here. We're trying to fight over a screen. Wait, I'm getting tired just watching Tyrone Perry and Jalen Rucker chase each other around the floor all, at, all day. Brantley into the ball game, along with Chris Rabio. American over Bucknell right now, 37-29. That game in almost exactly the same spot as this one. We gave you the uh, Navy final earlier, 72-65. A lot of head fakes, a lot of moves. No success that time by Matt Dove. And was Rabio doing a nice job, the freshman. Brantley to the corner. Lafayette got away with a errant pass. Hey, Lafayette's moving much more assertively on offense right now. Jenkins wants to go inside, nice. He's big, he's 6'7", and he's very athletic. He has eight points. Lafayette showing flashes now of kind of getting this thing together. That was a great sequence. Double team, works. Slap the ball away. Perry with a basketball. Brantley. Doesn't go, rebound Jenkins. Tyrone open, can he get it? Yeah, <laughs> nothing but nylon. Four minutes. Yeah, he just does not like the way this thing is going. Lafayette's defense has really been up to the challenge. The other thing, Gary, is remember we were talking about Army out-rebounding Lafayette in that first half. It's been dead even since then, so Lafayette shoring things up at the defensive and, and the rebounding uh, area. T.J. Small, no, on the move with the ball. Brantley, Brantley wants to go. He does, can't finish. Rebound controlled by Lafayette's Rabio. Nice job by Chris Rabio that time, the freshman. C.J. Fulton, and it goes. A triple for Leo O'Boyle, his third of the game. There is just a different tempo to Lafayette's offensive execution right now. You can just sense it. They're moving assertively and with confidence. And I give a lot of the credit, and I have the whole ball game, to their defense. Their defense is getting them in rhythm because the shots are not going. We're gonna get a foul here. So that will uh, stymie things a little bit because it will be a two-shot foul. This is called on Rabio, his first, yeah. team second. And I'm not sure Chris needed to do that. I mean, 6'8", oh. Josh Caldwell at about 6'2". And uh, it's a tough break because Caldwell got himself in position, but I, I'm not sure he, he could finish that play. Not a good free throw shooter, 54%. <laughs> If that holds true, he will not make this one. And you know, Gary, if Lafayette maintains this lead and it stays close down the stretch, that free throw shooting is always a key point. Oh, we haven't been great either. Yeah. In the league, we're at 58%. He makes them both. So that number will go up for him. In the league, Army is at 68%, seventh in the conference. Jenkins outside, Brantley. Tyrone, Neal, he can go. It's one on one and he's against Mann, who's much shorter. Oh, his arm up. I think that's when the elbow caught him, almost like an uppercut. So Lafayette does not go big. They don't bring Rabio out. Instead, they go smaller. <laughs> Leo O'Boyle has found the Leo O'Boyle touch. And that is great news for the Lafayette Leopards. He's now four for 10 from beyond the arc. Inside, it's gonna be a little different right now without uh, Neil Quinn in there. But you know, you told me early on how nasty Peterson is oh, yeah. 
Uh, he showed a little bit of that right there. Here you get a look at the old Boyle triple. Yeah, and uh, you know, on that play, Peterson came way out, Gary, to help. Man helped off, so it's helping the helper, they call it. Helping the helper. And the guy that Man left was Leo O'Boyle. So great job by the Leopards to find him. Now they know Leo is not, they know the Neal's not in there now. So they're looking for Peterson. That's his first field goal of the game. Leopards by seven. Not a good move by Brantley. He dribbled right into a double team. It was called well. Boy, they attack in the rim now. Good nice block job. Block by Law Ball. Perry. Outside. C.J. Fulton. Boom. C.J. with his first field goal of the game. They're heating up. This is Lafayette basketball right now. Leopards by six. Searching for that confidence in there. They're showing it right now. Leopard scheduled to play Wednesday at Holy Cross. That game's been postponed because of COVID protocols at Holy Cross. Foul will be called on Rabio. Second, team's fourth. Took a quick glance over at Fran O'Hanlon and we were on the same page. I thought that Chris Mann shuffled his feet a little bit. It's the old, uh, remember when Fred Flintstone used to get his car going? <laughs> 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 yeah, that's right. All right, Quinn is back. He's been looked at. I think he's ready to come back in. Duhart's been quiet. Good percentage three shooter. Way outside. That's Ness. Ness, no. Rebound, Rabio. Good rebounding position for the freshman. Well, you got to like the minutes that Chris Rabio is giving Fran O'Hanlon in this kind of game. Brantley. See how crisply the ball is moving. Oh, pretty. Rabio up and in. Nice pass from, I believe, Perry. It was Perry on the wing, and you saw Chris Rabio simply slip that screen. Great communication. They wanted a walk, and I think it was a walk. Out of bounds. It'll stay with Army. Fran wanted a walk. Early on, Coach saying he plays pretty well for a freshman. They want to get rid of that for a freshman tag, though, because he's been play playing pretty well in general. They don't want to start freshmen or have freshmen out on the, on the court as much as they do, but pretty glad it's CJ, guys. All right, Gwen, thank you very much. Certainly, CJ has developed nicely. Lafayette wanted another walk, so there's two walks they didn't get, and there was a peeper that was missed by Peterson, but they get the ball back for a fresh... 20. Fran is really upset right now with the officiating. That one partially blocked. It's still loose. Army wow. still has it. Unbelievable. Hey, Peterson's pretty good at throwing those elbows oh around. Oh my gosh, he's like it's a monster in there. One on the shot clock. Good if it goes, it does not. Never hit the rim. Shot clock violation. That is hand-to-hand -hand combat. Fran O'Hanlon is absolutely livid. He feels that Army's getting away with a lot of walks at this end, but man, how about the persistence of Lafayette defensively? Anytime the academies come here, we talk about their defense. The defense by Lafayette today has been better. 38, it's 36 points, Gary. We're three quarters of the way through this game. It, it's been that kind of game, and, and sometimes. And Army's the number one offensive team in the Patriot League in conference numbers, averaging 76 points a game. Yeah, I, the, the thing I'm most impressed with is Lafayette playing Army's style. And, and what it's led to is increased confidence, and I think that's shown itself at the offensive end for the Leopards. Neil Quinn gets it back. Boom! Ha! Why not? Great ball movement. The screen and roll is there, and Neil with an emphatic finish. He's back. He's healthy. Peterson. He managed to flip that one over the rim. Peterson with four. Good defensive discipline, though, that not to bail him out. Make Charlie earn it. Neil Quinn and Leo O'Boyle. Neil. A lot of basketball left. There Lafayette's he goes. Going to take Peterson inside. He'll put up to. Hey, he said, if you can do it down there. <laughs> I can do it up here. Here's the answer. Leverage by 14. 
Boy, I'll tell you, this is a this is a whale of a game, and it's the kind of game that Lafayette has been searching for, trying to get, trying to get under their feet here. Just the confidence factor. You talk about Fram being so upset with the officials. The Army coaching staff right now is very upset with their own players. Yeah. Yeah, Lafayette's defense has really got them out of sorts. There you get a look at the uh, second half field goal percentage. Lafayette at 75%. Army's at 29. Oh, my. How do you miss that shot? No. That dove missed it. <laughs> Jimmy Allen's got to be beside himself. That was well executed. It's almost as if Ness hit, uh, that, that was uh, Ness hitting the bottom of the rim. That was, a, that was Matt Dove. Ooh. Ooh, I thought, yeah. yeah, throw a little elbow, make a little room. <laughs> That's a little script out of the Army. Well, I don't. One-on-one -on -one play. Yeah, and I don't mind the aggressiveness of uh, Kyle Jenkins that time. He went right after it, and there's a foul on John Brantley. You don't get away with a reach around no. in college basketball. No. Maybe high school, but not college. Carry in. Fulton out. No, I thought, Gary, that if Lafayette found its stride a little bit and started playing with the kind of confidence that we've seen them play with in the past, that they could be in this game. I never envisioned a 16-point lead at this point. They have been playing outstanding basketball. Nothing helps more than playing harder. Oh. They have played hard this entire game. Here's a triple no. Army not shooting the ball very well at all, as evidenced by... Uh, Randall Miller's graphic there that we just showed you with their shooting percentage. Well, Lafayette's defending the inside and they're kind of forcing Army to the perimeter and it's not their strength. Lafayette has actually out-rebounded Army in the second half. That one is put up and that was strange. John Brantley loves to shoot the basketball. He is not shy. That is his 19th of the year. He knocks him down at 35%. Outside, pull up three. Duhart, back of iron, no. Good rebound by 22 out there is Quabena Davis, who's in for the first time. We talked about the depth of Army, and Jimmy Allen has gone deep into his bench trying to find an answer here, and Chris Mann's going to come back into the game. But, you know, Gary, you, you almost... Baseball, sometimes they say, you know, a team is in a slump and it takes a couple of hits and all of a sudden they break out. It almost like they break out together. And I get the sense that Lafayette's almost done that. Leo O'Boyle hit a couple in the first half. Tyrone Perry, and you had the, you had the sense that maybe they were coming out of it. Dove to the line, trying to complete the three-point play, and he does. Dove came in 50% from the line. They are seven for nine from the foul line. Lafayette, four for four. They haven't had a foul shot this entire second half. CJ, a miss there. Yeah, CJ almost forced to take that one. You know, it's, he wasn't going to take it at first. Doesn't go. Quinn has disrupted so many shots today in the paint. I dare say... It has been his best defensive game to this point in his Lafayette career. I mean, he's going up against some big, strong guys on the inside, and Army's got 41 points on the board. Oh, Boyle back in. A team that typically dominates the paint. Not so much today. The other good news is Fran has pretty much used his whole roster. He's used. He's used 10 players in this game. And John, we talked about almost having to do that foul be called here on Dove against Army because they can throw. Look like Mike Krzyzewski. Oh, was it that long yeah, ago? He, he wasn't that famous though. Oh my god! I can gosh. see where you might miss out. I know. Because, you know, he's, <laughs> not, I thought, he's I th not that good. I thought K was, the, oh, oh my goodness. Hey, we don't want to miss that. C.J. Fulton, second triple. Lafayette's lead is their largest 19 points. And now, John, you can wallow in your shame. <laughs> you know what? I, but I didn't realize. I thought he was. I thought it was an army a lot earlier than that. I think that was just after I was here. K isn't that. These guys are killing me in the truck. Krzyzewski was there in the seven. 
Uh, wait, Sabino, Sabino will not shut up. He just <laughs> <laughs> you forget the part about John has control over the personnel. I know, <laughs> I know, right? Up and in, Neil Quinn. He's got eight in the second half, 10 overall. Chris Mann with a nice move. His first yeah. field goal of the second half, I he's got 10. Just about to say, Gary, he's been way quiet. He is off to a pretty good start, but but I, I get, that speaks to the whole defensive effort by the Leopards today. Boy, Neil got hit in the face again. Poor Neil, he feels like he's been in a heavyweight battle. And when you're that handsome, you don't, uh, wanna, <laughs> I know, I you know. don't mess up the, I know. the looks. Neil's a great young man. Oh, he's terrific. Not a bad look at all by Brantley. He couldn't get it to go. Outside, put up by Rucker. And nothing going right for the Black Knights. They're going to bring three fresh numbers in. Caldwell's in. Ness is in. And Duhart is in. Brantley out. You know what I'm curious about is just how much impact this game may have on the psyche of this team. They've been looking and searching for something like this. They have really played well at both ends of the floor. Not over yet. The clock doesn't seem to be running quite as quickly when no, you have I, the lead. Exactly. Oh, Rabio, nice play from Kyle Jenkins. Army tried to press. Lafayette would have none of it. You know, when the spacing is there, it's a well-drilled basketball team are the Leopards, and when you press a team like this, you know, you run the risk. Yeah, you're going to try to get a steal at this end, but, you know, lots of times you have a disadvantage at the other end. Lafayette made him pay. Looking for an opening. Nothing there. Back outside the Rucker. Got Caldwell to his right. Instead, he decides to go inside to Peterson. Peterson on the floor. We're going to get a foul here, and I think it's going to be on Rabio. No, oh, Gary, the other thing is Lafayette's staff, coaching staff, has they've really scouted Army well. But I, scouting them well and then executing the scouting report are two different things. You mentioned earlier how effective they are at getting the ball in the lane and then kicking it out. It's almost like that's their first option. Dribble penetration and then kick it back out. Lafayette has done a great job not only discouraging the dribble penetration, but then recovering mm -hmm. to the shooters. And Army not shooting well. Beyond the arc, they're four for 21, 19%, 31% from the floor. A one and one here for Peterson. That doesn't go. Peterson a 47% free throw shooter. Tyrone working against Duhart. Lafayette's had some good contributions from any number of people off the bench. Rabio and Verbinskis. How about Tomas? Verbinskis puts it up, doesn't go. The, re the bench was ready to explode. Yeah. 21 point lead. Now it's down to 18 on a triple by Duhart. That's his first field goal of the game. 15th triple of the year. Up and in. Jenkins did a nice job. Again, Lafayette looking up the floor. They're attacking the zone pressure in the full court and finishing at the other end. Kyle with a dozen. That one does not fall. Army almost uh, forced now to take some threes to get back in this game. And Lafayette can start taking a little bit of time if they want. I mean, with this kind of lead, normally with four and a half minutes left, you wouldn't. But you don't need to rush anything. You can be more calculated on offense and if you use 20, 25 seconds to find a shot, that's just fine. If this lead holds up, it's going to be a little shocking around the Patriot League when other teams see this number. Absolutely. Uh, not so much. It's all about, you know, the struggles that Lafayette has had. Good hustle by Leo O'Boyle. Now we're going to get a foul against Army. That's just their sixth team foul, be a non-shooting foul. Foul called on Ness. You know, and Lafayette is still in that that time of the game where they, they don't want to take the air out of the basketball just yet. You want to stay aggressive, but you want to be smart. With a 20-point lead, there's no need to rush anything. Jay Vaughn back in. Leo O'Boyle out. Neil Quinn has come back in.
approaching the four minute mark. Jenkins inside. Wide open, Tyrone Perry. Ooh, he doesn't normally miss that one. Yeah, but a little bit out of rhythm, you saw that. He just, not initially where the pass was supposed to go. Neil doing Probably a nice. Three seconds. Wow. <laughs> Peterson worked hard for it. I'm not sure how long he was in the paint. But he worked hard, and it's under 20 points now, an 18-point lead. It was a smart play by Neil to not foul him in that situation, although I thought it was a three-second call or violation myself. Brantley, the sophomore, in there. And we're going to get a reach-in foul and a timeout. Then at Colgate, Lafayette American next week. Or what do we have, John? You've got some scores there? Yeah, well, actually, it's uh, the president's husband, Bill Hurd. I play golf with him, and <laughs> he's offered to, uh, we're going to have to put some putting practice together, my friend. Agreed. <laughs> well, as I often would say about your putting, it'll be a cold day in hell. Well, wait a minute. It is <laughs> kind of one of those. And it might be a good time for you to start those lessons. <laughs> From the outside, that is knocked down a three by Ness. That's his eighth of the year. And it's a 15 point lead, so don't go anywhere yet. Almost threw it away. Tried to give Neil a dunk there. Not quite in the right position to jam the catch down. Not a bad decision there to get that ball back out. See if they can't get a better look. Seven on the shot clock. Put it up and put it in. Neil Quinn. He's got a dozen. How about that? You use 27 seconds in a game that you need to use time, and then you finish it with a mid-range jumper. Neil Quinn has played a whale of a basketball game. Down inside, Peterson will get fouled. Foul will be on Perry, his third. And Lafayette does not want to stop the clock for any reason. Lafayette has really done a nice job spreading out the rebounds. The leading rebounder is Kyle Jenkins with six. Yeah, they've actually really shored things up. Gary, you remember in the first half, Army out-rebounded Lafayette by 10, and it seemed worse than that. And it's the same right now, by yeah. 10. So they have uh, evened it up. Peterson 0 for 2 from the line. Make it 0 for 3 from the line. It's a great win for the Leopards. I think I can safely say that right now. They're just moving the ball so well. Jenkins, nothing. Oh my God, that's not a great exchange right there. I think too little, too late, but you want to finish this thing out, Gary, not for so much for this game, but you know, the games are connected. You know, you finish it strong and don't get sloppy at the end. And Things to learn at every part of the basketball game. Lafayette, uh, they haven't had many opportunities in the league to learn being ahead. Rucker with that one. Rucker with 14. Under two minutes to go at 159. Rucker came in averaging 15.3. And Rucker is now up to 15 points. That's the way you break a press. Oh, yeah. As I said before, this... This team knows how to play, Gary. They, they, they've just been kind of lacking a little confidence, but boy, what a confidence filler this could be. Army is a good Patriot League basketball team. There's no doubt about that. Tyrone Perry, no, over the top this time will be on Quinn. His second, we're gonna walk the other way and shoot two. Yeah, and this, and this is, uh, Again, Fran, <laughs> I don't think Fran is, is sweating just yet. They still have a 15-point lead with a minute and a half left, but you want to play the game for 40 minutes and make good decisions at the end, and they have played so well to this point. Lafayette would have loved, I think, to have Holy Cross come down here on a Wednesday. They've got a little momentum now, so now they're going to sit again for a week before they go and how much difficulty how, how much difficulty is it to play at Colgate? We know oh, yeah. how hard it is to go up to Hamilton and 
beat Colgate on their floor. And remember earlier in the season when Lafayette was trying to get it going, I think they had a, a total of three practices in about 17 days. And, you know, it's a team that hasn't played together a whole lot, the front court probably, but not so much the back court in developing depth. So you're right, Gary, that's uh, not, not insignificant. Army are taking as much time off the clock as they can. Army not in any hurry to commit a lot of fouls here. Three on the shot clock. That does hit the rim. Oh. That hit the rim. I'm not quite sure why uh, that was not a shot clock violation. He certainly got rid of it Let's before Let's take the a look buzzer. at it, Gary. Did it get up to the rim? Oh, no, it was oh, below it. it did not. Below okay. it. Out of the corner, Ness. Nope, Leo with a rebound. And that's only a freshman. He likes to shoot the ball at 6'8", you know? He's a catch and shoot kind of guy. He's sort of the kind of guy that would fit nicely in the Lafayette system. So we can't draft him. No, we can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> this is just a matter of the final numbers. Coming up, of course, the post-game show presented by the Maroon Club. Enhancing 23 Division I sports joined the Maroon Club today. And our player of the game presented by Coca-Cola. Experience the Coke side of life. Leo is not going to rub anything in. He'll back it up. They will dribble this one away. And Lafayette wins game number one in the Patriot League. And they knock off the team that came in tied for first place. Final.